Then, Sir Lug, bukas, bukas sirado, bukas sirado. 15, 18. Is alamig pa ang IMO aircon kaysa sa IMO rev. So, does it inhibit? Of course not. And it, it, it will encourage faster spoilage of your of your food products. So there are two categories refrigerated during transport and storage but sold at room temperature or distributed, stored, and sold. These include food products such as livestock meat, milk, dairy products, fresh fish products. Magkaiba sila nga ah. Pag being refrigerated siya during transport and storage but sold at room temperature, once na exposed na siya sa room temperature, rapid, rapid na ang, spoil, ang, ang chance to spoil it. But kung the whole life of the of the food product naka refrigerator siya mas longer pa compared to refrigerated during transport and storage per sold at room temperature. Okay? We go to flash freezing. Flash freezing is a process in which food is very quickly frozen at extremely cold temperatures. Ang iyang positive side, you get the all or almost all of the nutrient benefits as well as the flavor of the food. But it's usually the freezing point says negative 0 0.5 to negative 4 degrees Celsius. So usually at this state, enzymatic reactions are stopped in a product in which 100% of the water is solidified. So because you reduce activity of enzymes, you decrease the chance of spoilage in food products. But in this industrial flash freezing usually is being done at negative 18 degrees Celsius. Um, I remember when I was uh, working in Red Ribbon, uh, Iloilo Commissary, wala na sila nag-close sa sila. Ang commissary nila, in, dito na sila nagkakuha sa Cebu. So if you notice, if you are in Iloilo, nag-decrease ang number of uh, red ribbon stores in Iloilo. Before there was already, there was in Calibo. I don't know if there is still one. Wala na. May araw sa muna man sa Capiz at uh, Gaysano. Daw nag-close na. Sa Gimaras, may araw ma'am. Tapos wala na subong. Araw man gapon. Ah, bago pala. Okay. But nag-buhin sila stores because nag-totally close na ang commissary din. But when I was working with Red Ribbon, Arapang, I was working at the commissary as a QA. And I remember during peak season, which is December, December is our peak season. People buy a lot of cakes during December, during Christmas and New Year. Actually, the peak gift is New Year. I don't know, I don't get the logic why people buy a lot of cakes during New Year. But that is our peak peak na siya, na time. And so way before that, we produce already um, base cakes, meaning wala na icingan, wala pa na icingan, ang core pa lang, ang, ang chiffon pa lang na siya, wala pa na siya na slice, wala pa na siya. We produce a lot of it, so we have like 15 days nga, 24 hour production, produce lang siya sang, sang base cakes. And what we do with our base cakes, we produce them around uh, early, if I'm not mistaken, mid of November, and we use it as long as around the 31st of December. Regular cakes would spoil, would have a shelf life for around, especially if chiffon siya, would spoil at around four to five days. Mas-start na siya ang drying niya, sometimes kung very humid git, ara na ang sour, souring smell. But, kung i-moon siya namun by November, it can last December 31st. Why? We do blast freezing of our base cakes. So we expose them at temperatures of, we have um, parang conveyor vans, conveyor as big as this, na ang temperature is around negative 30 to negative 32. So very, very freezing cold. Magsunod ako for inspection, I usually use, uh, I, may proper jacket ako, or eskimo ka na. And when I'm uh, on duty, nga kaagahon, para hindi ko matuyo, nagasunod ako da. May super lamig siya. But anyway, it makes our, our chiffon cakes last very long because it's naga in a blast freeze shop. Blast freeze, flash freezing. So usually, um, negative 32 siya, pero and then we store them at around negative 18. 
ang storage naman. Okay. Deep freezing, so it's um, is, is a lower process naman niya. Therefore, it forms bigger ice crystals. Pag flash freezing palaan, very rapid ang, ang freezing of your, of your food products, creating very, very fine ice crystals. That's, that makes up for the very, very smooth texture of very expensive ice creams. Na-notice nyo, ang ice cream nga nabutang sa freezer, tapos nag-brown out, wala mo siya kinkaon, ara lang siya sa tub. Nagbalik ang kuryente, na-refreeze siya. What do you experience? Coarse ang texture, di ba? Because ang pag-refreeze sa iya, slower process siya. Hindi na siya ang commercial process before naging undergo sa imo ice cream. Therefore, forming big ice crystals, hindi na siya soft to the to the mouth. Ang hindi na siya soft ang iya or smooth ang iya mouth feel. So when the product is thawed, it loses liquid and uh, consequently nutritive principles get lost and organoleptic qualities of the product can decrease. So that's about um, principle of food preservation in terms of using uh, cold temperatures, freezing and refrigeration. Between the two, of course, freezing is much preferred because it creates longer shelf life for most of your food products. However, not all food components can be freeze without affecting quality. You cannot freeze your vegetables, right? Pagwaksan, kung i-freeze mo ang imong nga pechay, pagwaksi na. Durog-durog nga pechay. Ba? So you can only, as far as, you can only do refrigeration for prolonged shelf life of, of fresh nga pechay. We also preserve food by using salt and sugar. So common practice ni siya. Salt, ginasinan ka ang mga pagkaon. Then usually is followed by drying. Not just the salting process, but it's followed by either drying or what? Fermentation. Buro is a fermented product, but with the aid of salting. So, the addition of salt or sugar is a very primary preservation technique followed by other preservation techniques. Hindi siya maka-stand on its own. Sugar, for example, when you put sugar in your fruit products, making them into jams and jellies, you need to do further process, further preservation technique, which is pasteurization, in order to increase shelf life. Hindi mo siya pwede ma nga major preservation technique mo because your food will not last long. But it's being used. For ordinary households, you can employ the use of salt and sugar to prolong your sh the shelf life of your food a little bit, but not for a longer period of time. If you want to go for longer periods of time, you, do, you need to do another type of food preservation technique. It's either dehydration when you do salting, or even sugar, or pasteurization. Why? Anong, concept, anong logic? The addition of salt and sugar. Salt binds with moisture. Sugar binds with moisture as well that is present in your food. Thereby decreasing the amount of moisture that is available for your microorganisms. Amo na ang iya nga scientific uh, explanation bahan. Why salting of fish increases its shelf life? Or why addition of a lot of sugar to make jams and jellies and marmalades increases the shelf life of your food? Because those two solutes, salt and sugar, binds with water, therefore um, competes with your microorganisms for available water. Use of acids, we know that your microorganisms thrive well in alkaline conditions. So kung acids, ang culprit mo is yeast and molds lang. And remember, pathogenic microorganisms, mostly bacteria sila. So you can use acids to increase shelf life of food Even products. Net. Remember, between Sinabawan and Paxio, di na mas nagadugay. Paxio, because they you use acid in the form of vinegar. We go to the last one, which is some time ago in the 1990s, this has become a very controversial type of food preservation. Because irradiation, they say, causes um, 
is carcinogenic in nature. Hamba nila. But a lot of studies after that has proven otherwise. Um, irradiation is not a new technology. Actually, it was developed in the 1950s pa. And has been used ever since. What is irradiation? You have a lot of you have you have a lot of um, different wavelengths, or radiation energy. You have X rays, gamma rays, cosmic rays. You have um, radiation waves coming from electricity, sound, light. Um, ionizing radiation is there between IR and UV, or around the UV side, and it's being used to damage or kill microorganisms. So nagapasa under the U, uh, under the <coughs> the ionizing radiation ang imong food product and instantly kills microorganisms gina gina ano ni ganit gina deactivate niya ang iyang uh, capability to reproduce um nga ang naging controversial siya because um, they said that to paris na lang balila nga if you are um exposed to radiation ba can cause cancer or it can cause diseases. So, amun na ang ila. But then, um, when we talk about food products, um, very minute ang amount of, of uh, radiation na gina, ginapaagi sa food para mag-kill ang microorganisms. And once na kill na sila, ang level of, ang nabilin na radiation ni Ara sa food is not enough. It was proven that it's not enough to cause um, disease or cancer in human beings. But just the same, the key is always in moderation. Everything, even if it's good, if taken in very, very high quantities, will always cause disease. Diba? Fruit is very good. Mangoes, for example, is very good. But you eat mangoes every day, ripe mangoes, every day of your life, you'll have diabetes as well as you will have jaundice because it's rich, rich in carotenoids. May yellowish ka. So everything, even if it's good, if not eaten in moderation, will cause disease. So there, how it's being used, as I've mentioned already. Um, some foods for astronauts who cannot risk food, foodborne illness. No, ang food nga ginagamit for astronauts are um, gina, gina, ang ginagamit na technology is irradiation. But of course, today, mas with the other technologies given, dapat nagigyan ang mga preservation techniques. Some of what we consume today might be irradiated foods already. Okay. Okay, so the treatments can reduce microbial load, destroy parasites as well as insects, so not only microorganisms, and inhibit the germination of tubers and bugs. So irradiation is also being used to um, pag, pag grow some mga food products. Like for example, mongo sprouts hindi ka man gusto nga ang mongo sprouts mo may dahon na, di ba? So, to to inhibit the growth of the, the ano gani, ang sige-sige nga pag-grow sa mga mongo, mongo sprouts or mong bean sprouts, you use irradiation. Okay? The residual radioactivity does not remain in food. Ang muna siya kinakulbaan nila sa una. Kaba nila may radiation nga ara pa nag sa food sa irradiated food. But it is proven otherwise na wala na siya nag-stay. Nag-dissipate siya afterwards. Okay? So that's my thank you dance. <laughs>